Ooh, I look good. Look at that, dude. I got the right curves and everything. Actually, <laughs> what am I looking at? Is that that is a shadow, right? That is a shadow. I know I'm not that thin. Hell, I'm actually even much <laughs> over. How's it going, everybody? My name is Dalaran. Today I got to get into some. Oh, whoa, the mirrors in a really should be effective over there. It's like a lightning bolt. Anyway, I got to play a little bit more arenas on my Outlaw Rogue. I decided finally which build I want to play with. And there's a variety of different builds. Don't worry about the group. I'm about to do a key. But the variety of different builds that comes with Outlaw is... Outlaw is just not that super amazing and easy to get into for PvP. Hopefully I can do this in two minutes, by the way. As Assassination. Assassin got the sustain. Assassin got the burst. As Outlaw, you don't really have burst. Blizzard just nerfs you and burst everywhere you can. Sustain is, <laughs> it's 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 there if you do dungeons and raids. But for some reason, this Blizzard decided to nerf our sustain as well. So we have absolutely nothing. In fact, most people think Outlaw is just like this guy, kind of dead in the cellar. But you know, being pirated, you're dead in the water. But Outlaw is actually really really good. With the current build that I got going on, it's more sustain focused and makes it very fun to play with. The traits we're going to be going for are Snake Eyes. Triple stack and Snake Eyes is the most important thing. You would think Deadshot will also be another important trait. It somewhat is and can be useful, but Snake Eyes will be the bread and butter of this playstyle. You also change your talents up a little bit. You go Weapon Master, which is weird, but it gives you more sense of strikes. You're not going to be holding on to any of the buffs that you get, so you're going to be rolling through them just to give you more sustain. You're going to go with Retractable Hug, Deeper Strat, Elusiveness, Blinding Powder, uh, Alec Al 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 Alacrity, and uh, Blade Rush. And in the honor talents, like Smoke Bomb, Thick of Steves, and take your cut. But since you're going to be using Roll the Bones a lot in order to maintain the buff for your Sinister Strike damage, you're going to be getting a lot of, well, you're going to be not ever holding on to a buff because it's a good buff. You're going to just be going for whatever buffs you feel like. So take a cut will give you extra haste for you to get a little bit extra value on the damage. So that's going to be really, really nice. The uh, Let me take this someone just because you know I feel like I'll forget it any moment now. The essences you want to run are going to be Crucible in the main. You got Merlucid in the off. And I like to go with Conflict of Strife for the extra verse because that does help you do more damage. Onto my gear, we are going to be going for PvP mostly for a little bit of that Notorious Gladiator's badge so we get actual burst capability. And I decided to go with Dribbling Ink Pod. It's not a super amazing trinket, but if the enemy doesn't constantly dispel it, that will mean that they will not be able to deal with the, uh, I guess the effect once an enemy drops low. Can be quite good for almost like an execute type of effect that may happen. And hopefully you remembered all those essences that I just played because now I gotta change them for the key. But yeah, this is everything that you need in order to play Outlaw with this new build and it's a lot of fun. I'm gonna go and do this key real quick because this team is ready to go. But hopefully you guys have a great time watching the arenas. And I got another video for arenas for you at a later time. So the first game we're getting into is gonna be a Demon Hunter and a Restoration Droid. There's a couple ways you can go about it when it comes to playing your Outlaw. You can either just sit on the Demon Hunter the whole time. He does have Relentless, so he is going to be susceptible to stuns. But you could also go and arrest the Druid once you get his trinket out. This was my very first game with this build, so I was very, very rusty. Very, very sloppy in terms of my setups and the playstyle. So this was the best time for me to test out how much output I can do. One of the questions I was going to ask myself, first of all, is generally Outlaw Rogue has a very hard time dealing with rest of Druids, simply because their healing is just so strong, you never have enough damage to beat the Hots. So that's one of the things that we can actually get to test out in this first arena. The second one is getting the burst out onto the rest of Druid. One of the honor talents I'm currently running for this is Plunder Armor, which will allow me incredible burst, whether I use that burst on the Demon Hunter or onto the Droid. A little bit of time later, I decide to go for a stun onto the healer and try to unload all the damage onto the Demon Hunter, Plunder Armor, Trinket, using my Crucible and doing as much damage as I humanly can. Ink Pod was enough to crit on the guy to get him close to the kill. We get a Trinket out of the Restoration Druid, we get every defensive out of the Demon Hunter, and even though neither one of the enemy team members are dead, that is still a massive advantage for the both of us. This is the perfect opportunity you want to end up as Outlaw Rogue, or really any other Rogue. 
you have the healer without a trinket you have a demon hunter with no big defensives you have him on relentless so he will have to sit stuns not the full duration but will still have to sit them but you don't need a full stun just to score enough damage onto the dh one of the things that i love about this build is right now we have zero pressure to really get anything going i throw a crucible into the demon hunter and it does not enough damage for me to get a setup but i interrupt the healer by using blade rush and using kick right after in order to stop his cast and then I'm able to continue my sustained pressure while the healer is technically locked out onto the demon hunter while he is line of sighting his own healer. So this continues on for a little bit longer and I just keep trying to chug the damage into the DH. He's looking like a really juicy target. No more darkness to be expected out of him. All I have to do is watch out for Iron Bark, which he just got. Blur, which he's going to have sometime soon. Thorns, which is going to do damage back to me and put pressure on both me and the priest. I gotta be honest, as a rogue, sometimes you have to be offensive and put as much pressure onto a single enemy. And the Demon Hunter is the guy that I'm trying to burst as hard as I can, but Thorns is just going to reflect all that damage back to me, making it very, very uncomfortable for me to play out this game, because now I am the one melting while I'm trying to kill the DH. We get the Restoration Druid in a blind, but the Demon Hunter is trying to peel in order to give himself a little bit extra survivability. I Blade Rush to the healer to try to see if I can interrupt him or maybe CC him. Since there is no damage over time on the healer, I decide to opt in for a gouge. And that was our first game. It went, I feel like, pretty well. It was a lot of pressure and a lot of damage out of the Demon Hunter, but the CC is what really secured it. Now the next game is the one where Y team lost. I feel like it was mostly because of me making a couple crucial misplays, but I still feel like this game is significant to show you guys. In case you were wondering just how much damage does an outlaw rogue deal with this build, is this damage output worth? And it's a perfect game against a Restoration Druid, which is a class with insane amount of healing for an outlaw to deal with. Most of my healing being all physical, no damage over time, if you don't count Crucible. So I'm mostly all about just trying to make swaps or go for CC chains in order to secure a kill. The other team member for the Restoration Druid is a Fury Warrior. This class has plenty of self-healing on their own. They are also a plate class, so all that physical damage is heavily reduced from an outlaw road. One of the reasons why people stick with assassination for arenas would be because of the poisons, physical damage, as well as bleed damage. The bleeds and poisons go through cloth, they go through plate, they go through mail. It doesn't matter what type of gear your enemy is wearing, it'll just go right through them. Not accounting for the CC chain, Garrote, maybe even the kidney shot damage vendetta or the wound poison that assassination rogue brings. Now it sounds like I'm making an argument for assassination and against outlaw as I'm saying this, but whenever you play a weird spec, like outlaw, you have to realize where your strengths and weaknesses lie. The only way you can do it is really compare yourself to the other specs that are far stronger in general for PvP, for example. I want to see what they are strong at, where my strengths are, and where my weaknesses, and can I cover for those weaknesses. My strengths for Outlaw with this build, however, is the damage output, even though it's all physical and can be mitigated by armor, is actually still quite huge. The amount of damage I can do in terms of sustain once I get my buffs rolling, once I focus on my playstyle rather than focusing on cutting the enemy and running away from the enemy and just focusing on scoring the kill, focusing on doing the most amount of damage possible, you can actually get yourself quite good sustainable damage competitive to that of a Fury Warrior, which is probably the one of the strongest, most sustain heavy playstyles that you have in the game right now. Combine that together with incredible CC with a very short blind, sap, range stun that has a much shorter cooldown than 25 seconds, a grapple hook for the insane mobility, blade rush for insane mobility, gouge, you have plenty of CC together with some of the burst potential and good sustained damage with this build in particular in order to put on some serious pressure. But almost enough pressure to score a kill on a restoration dude as he's literally at 5% health, rallying cry and all those hots, I hate them. Either way, this shows that the build does have potential with damage alone, so I feel like it's definitely worth trying and playing it, and I got a couple more games to show you after this one. Another question you might be asking, what is the burst capability of this build? When playing especially against Restoration Druids, sometimes Outlaw has a very hard time dealing enough damage in order to out-sustain them. The healing over time abilities and them sitting in bear form is usually enough for them to just outlive any output you have when you're just trying to whittle them down. So you might want to upstart your damage, get yourself some real big burst going, and can you one-shot a Restoration Druid in the setup? 
This build technically can. I would primarily attribute this to me going more offensive build. I usually go for very defensive trinkets, but my class lacks damage, so going for a more offensive build playstyle does mean that it will leave you very, very vulnerable to pressure and sustain damage and even burst damage. Like, I won't have a safety trinket to be my safety net inside of an arena. But that means I give myself an opportunity to turn the damage around onto a restoration druid who has bark skin, who has pet sack, who is struggling to get himself some hots from the offensive pressure that my healer is putting out, dispelling all this heal over times. So yes, in the short, Outlook can actually get some great bursts. I was happy to record this footage here for the video. Outlook can definitely lock enemies down, get yourself a little bit extra oomph, and continue trucking along afterwards. I also have this clip right here. This is the same Restoration Druid Demon Hunter combo from earlier, and these guys played this game very defensively. Even the Demon Hunter tried to keep me in prison, tried to keep me CC, they tried to not let me do any form of damage whatsoever. I mean, literally for the first 18 seconds of the game, I'm actually unable to play the game. I'm just CC'd in one way or another. And then the game decides, you know what? You've been sitting in CC long enough. Here's a 5 buff for your outlaw. So I finally get to unleash all the bursts possible. Also take a note that Rest of Druid is literally at half health. I didn't even touch him. That was all my disc breeze. This is why I love playing with disc breeze. It's a lot of fun because the damage that they can put out if they are geared enough is equivalent to that of an extra DPS. This build is actually getting complete nerf for the next patch. It's mostly because there are other trinkets and abilities that interact with a talent for this priest called Schism. Schism allows them to put a debuff on the enemy after doing a bit of shadow damage, and the debuff makes enemies take 40% more damage. So a disc priest with Schism and some really good trinkets, maybe some great proc trinkets that are proccing quite often, with a good setup for essences and traits to do more damage, they can basically one-shot somebody all by themselves. I've done videos before with disc priest, but this build overall is getting nerfed for patch 8.3, which is perfect because for Outlaw Rogue, one of the more viable comps for Outlaw has been playing with disc priest. Being able to give them tricks of trade in order to increase the damage by 10% sometimes helps them do enough damage for your team together to score a kill on whoever it is you might be bursting on. This is a little bit later in the game as the whole time I was mostly sat in roots and cyclones and bashes so eventually I do get to do some damage onto the demon hunter. I gave myself a decent setup with a crit buff and a couple stacks of snake eyes, drop a smoke bomb with plunder armor onto the demon hunter with everything getting unloaded onto this guy in the opener and try to just see if I can finish him off. Again, I'm very satisfied with the damage I was able to output. Most of the game I'm sitting in CC and most of the game the demon hunter isn't there to pad. So his single target consistency versus my damage whenever I'm not sitting in CC is at least something that I am surprised and pleased with. The next game ended up being one of the hardest against an elemental shaman and a restoration druid. What made this game very very challenging for me is the amount of pressure these guys can put out. With the CC that the restoration druid and the shaman can bring with hexes, stuns, cyclones, and with the fact that resto is playing feral affinity so he can go into cat form and do quite a bit of damage, I'm basically getting attacked on both fronts while my healer is going to get CC'd left and right. So the pressure that these two can put out is quite amazing. Again, Restoration Druid is all about healing over time, which is a type of damage that is very difficult for me to deal with since I don't have anything that deals with healing over time easily. The best of way to deal with healing over time, I would say, would be like a Mortal Strike effect, which Outlaw simply just doesn't pack. So, off the bat, this game is going to be one of the more challenging ones that I've had in a while. Plus, I haven't seen an Elemental Shaman in 2s in quite a bit, so I'm not used to when they're going to be bursting, how much damage they do. But they really are all about sneaking up this damage on you. You'll just be fine for a while, and then bam, you get a Lightning Bolted and Earth Shocked out of nowhere, and you're just melting right in front of your eyes. And there's sometimes very little you can do about it. So we have two bits of strategies, we can either sit on an LA Shaman while throwing all our CC into the Druid, in hopes that eventually the Druid will use his Trinket, and then we'll be able to follow up more CC afterwards, after getting our cooldowns back, like Blind and Stun and Fear and Sap, and then continue sustain pressure onto the Elemental Shaman. Or the Shaman can Trinket something like a Fear, or a Blind, or a Sap, or a Gouge, or a Stun, and then we wait until the DRs are back in our favor, throw everything into the Restoration Shaman in a single go, and then hope for the best. We get caught in a very, very bad setup right now, with my healer hexed, me cycloned, not a lot that I can really do for a self-heal, just trying to do what I can to survive, and I'm getting re-cycloned, so none of the healing over time abilities, or even my own personal heal, is enough for me to survive. So the plan is going to end up being I will have to go onto the restoration druid and try to do as much damage to him as humanly possible. I just got to get a setup. 
I do roll myself a buff. It doesn't matter what buff you get, but I end up getting myself a crit buff. The only thing that truly matters when it comes to playing this out of rogue playstyle is rolling yourself a buff. And then now you have yourself sustained damage. If you want to keep rolling buffs until you have snake eyes together with another viable DPS buff that might be like critical strike or auto attack or broadsides for raw damage increase for all your other stats, then you might be able to go with it. But we do land a stun and now the team is in full peel mode. I'm just going to see if I can train and write down the restoration druid this whole game. I got him fairly low. I got some damage rolling. I can maybe just continue sitting on the guy the whole time. So even if this build is more focused on sustained damage, it definitely can turn around some great burst. It can also really train down a target and write things down like an assassination rogue would be able to. So that's what feels good about this playstyle for Outlaw, is the fact that I can go for sustain, but I can't opt it for burst if that is the playstyle that is needed to win the game. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts about the Outlaw Rogue sustain build. I've been trying to figure out what build I want to play with Outlaw going back into arenas. And the only build that's been available for Outlaw was this burst pistol shot build. And I've tried it, I've been playing it for a while. It's cool and it is somewhat effective, but it makes you feel like you're locked down to specific comps to play with. If Outlaw can put out a bit more damage on its own, then it might open up me more availability to play with other healers. Healers that are maybe less aggressive, that are more about sitting back and using cooldowns in order to outlive their enemy. So in a battle of attrition, the sustained damage of this build could potentially be good with it. This also is a decent playstyle when it comes to playing double DPS. I'll have that as a next video as soon as I'm able to edit in the footage. But yes, Outlaw can also play double DPS with this specific playstyle right now. I'll have clips for you to show a little bit later. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Let me know what you think about this Outlaw burst or sustained build that can put out some decent bursts depending on how you gear yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll probably be running with this build for PvP in the next season and see how it goes. Thank you all. And I'll see all of you in another video.